on top of the USS William Irvin. 33 people lost their lives as a result of this one storm. As far as you can see, Lake Superior. Look at the bold size. You had to see it all of America. Japanese uh, flag on it. Made some Japanese kills. Lambo! We're at the Harley Davidson Museum. <laughs> Stadiums and stuff is back over that way. People out there uh, kayaking. Very industrial looking building there, that's for sure. This dynamic hill climber is a tour, it's a gift from a family to all of Harley Davidson enthusiasts. You're making some motion, ain't you? Davidson lived when he first started. Sink at the Harley Davidson place. successful dirt track racing motorcycles in Harley Davidson history. In 1950, it accounted for 18 of 24 national championship wins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. mail carrier. <laughs> Model J. I like these. Like I don't care nothing about the new ones, but I like these models right here. What model is that? That's a 46, a 42. And that was a U.S. Army. So it was made for the desert. You see the tires. Eighty-eight thousand. Model U. Good sign, car. You can tell by the tires. Take stuff in and out, huh? Two stroke, 125, yeah. That's still on the part, the plant, but they make fiberglass motorcycle parts out of it these days. A little uh, two stroke golf cart. <laughs> Easy Rider. Remember that movie? Yeah. Starting to, you can start to tell the shape of them is starting to get a little bit more rounded. Isolated shore of Graham Island, part of a group of sparsely populated islands in BC. Harley Davidson. Mike's license plate revealed a Japanese origin. Tsunami stuck after that. Wow. It's the 100th anniversary, over 6,000 signatures. Everybody, Rod was at California and stripping the photo wall. I think the 100th is all about people. 76. Baja 500, buddy. 2007 Nightster. An orange and black one there. That's one of those Pan Am Harleys. That's a 2021. That's a new new bike for them, but this, yeah. this style of uh, adventure touring is yeah. really popular now. Reading in the motor restaurant here at the Harley Davidson Museum. Wow, look at them. 
Look at a mast right up there in uh, Milwaukee. Tree flavor. Some people say that uh, gin tastes like Christmas trees. <laughs> uh, well, I like a cider tree. What is it? That's a pine tree. Drinking some gin. They don't have to drink all of it, just taste it. Alright, this is gin. This is actually gin they put in a uh, barrel so it actually gets color. It gets all of uh, some of those barrel sugars as well. It'll be the first time I've ever tasted one of these. We just had the regular gin. It was it was quite strong. For, uh... So this is their rum, and it's made with molasses, and they said they put some Wisconsin maple syrup in it. Mm. You gonna like it? We're gonna try it. Gin, barrel gin, rum, bourbon, rye whiskey, mixed whiskey, and we're drinking. So this is absinthe. Add a little bit of water to it. <laughs> kind of smells like black licorice. Yes. That water tank. It's a part of it. We're near. Uh, we're around Sixth Street right now. So that's Sixth Street right there. That's the Sixth Street Bridge. We're just walking back from the tour. In the background back there, you can see the. Miller light can on top. It's only 70 degrees. We're loving it. Oh, good old Lake Michigan never disappoints. You probably couldn't tell the difference. If you put somebody out here blindfolded, they'd probably say, wow, that's crazy. Right? Yes, sir. You could get in trouble out there on a the boat. A little garden out here. Historic shipwreck, schooner Kate Kelly, wooden schooner, two masts, built 1867, sank May the 14th, 1895, had grain, coal, and lumber on it, 55 feet, two miles offshore it sank. This rail was used to carry the surf boat from in the costume in the field of surf boat recording from the lake by Jib Boyce. This is where they kept the boat. Under those doors. Chicago. We actually parked the van in this uh, McCormick Place Truck Marshalling Center. It's about the only place you can park something that needs nine foot clearance. Uh, that's not such a hassle. So we got a spot out in the lot and now we're walking. I think we're going to try to hit McCormick Place and there's a metro station there and try to take that in maybe up to uh, further up toward the, uh, the Navy Pier or whatever. All right, boys and girls, first stop, Soldier Field. Navy Pier here. We're up by the Ferris wheel right now. It's right there. You want to get on? Chicago skyline.
probably get cold on that thing today. That's the USS Chicago Anchor. So we're just walking to uh, Millennium Park to go see the beam, but uh, coming down Grand Avenue right now. We're gonna go to Columbus to hang a lift. I did a I did the river tour one time. I did the river tour one time. Please hello, hello. Horse police, horsey police. Horsey police. Some cool architecture in We made it. Pavilion. It's kind, of, it's kind of cool already today. We don't really need to get in the, in the water, do we? Headed to the Willis Tower. Got about another block to go, and that's it. You ready? Tower. We're just having some lunch here at the Shake Shack. We're gonna get a burger before we uh, go down the escalator and head to the sky deck. So, old man's kind of uh, a little bit tired. A little bit tired, yeah. How far do you think we walked today? Five miles at least. Five, six. Yeah, probably five miles. City sits on a swampy ground. The 1850s old city blocks of downtown Chicago were manually hoisted up five to ten feet in order to run sewage pipes that would drain waste and prevent flooding. I'm just right here. The Rookery Building. <clears throat> the Rookery Building is the oldest standing high rise. Twelve stories. <laughs> so uh, in the 1860s they did a need for clean drinking water from Lake Michigan so the city dug a canal that reversed the flow of the Chicago River sending city waste away from the lake instead of towards it. And guess where they send it to? Oh, St. Louis. There it goes. Chicago's elevated train system began running in 1892 and most lines remained elevated even after the creation of the subway. The L train carries more than 700,000 loads daily. William Wrigley of the Wrigley Gun Company. That's that building. The Wrigley's putting it. Yeah. It was the tallest building in the world when it was built and held the title for 25 years. 110 floors. It was commissioned by Sears and Roebuck, 1969. 107 high-speed elevators running on 70 miles.
thousand people carry twenty thousand people up and down the tower every day. So there's the ledge. That's what I was talking about. You can stand out here to see the city. We're gonna go up there. So those towers, the antennas add almost three hundred feet of height to the building. For decades, they have provided signal service for Chicago television, radio, wireless, and digital transmission. And that's what they look like on top. Look, we're actually on it. Looks like you're almost riding it. Next up, going China back. Tower. Look, they got the Chicago South barbecue. Fried chicken, Italian beef. So the hot dogs have peppers and celery salt. And they have tomatoes, pickles. And All it is is just a big meal. <laughs> Pretty good, right? See where we parked at? No, way down there. The long building. back into the building. Jeez. You think we're gonna make it today? Yeah, sometime. It's a long line. Don't freak out now when you look down.